Okay. And then we can start, I think. Nice. And I'll just make you a host again. Oh, there we go. Ooh. All right. Let's, uh, let's get started. And then I'll host. Actually, I was going to show you guys the making of video first, which you've probably seen. I should have prepared this a lot better. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, we had one day, don't worry. We, we understand. Here's my whole list of videos. Oh yeah, I'm trying to make today not too long, so... So far, the last few have gone on for, you know, like two and a half hours, which is pretty awesome. I don't hold you guys too long, but anyway, um, oh shit, I need a screen share, don't I? You guys know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. All right, here we go. Take your time. Oh, All right, can you guys see my screen? Yep. So I just want to start off with this video. too loud i thought maybe it's too loud but... uh for me it was just fine it was a bit laggy but it was the sound was fine yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's probably the sound is fine yeah um so with the the making of um dino punch um my initial idea was um we we're talking about this with pranab earlier was um first i had an idea of just like guy punching a dinosaur like that was really I just wanted to make a cool shot of a guy punching a dinosaur um, so you know I came up with um, keywords keywords uh, um, the attitude the intent the pretty much describes the characters as well but it was more about the type of shot I was after um, and then I also had to figure out how a guy was gonna punch a dinosaur so to do that he had to be pretty high so he has to jump off like a, a cliff edge I thought um, so the essence of the shot keywords uh, I wanted like power in the shot lots of power weight um, heavy like heaviness creature um, even like of the hip had to feel heavy um, destructive uh, it had to I guess have you know anger like it's just that's all kind of combining into one. I uh, just wanted really one hit. Um, I mean, there's a few beats in there, um, but really there was one big beat, which was uh, the punch. Uh, had to be dynamic, cool. Had to be fucking awesome, <laughs> exciting. Yeah, had to have wow factor. People had to go whoa. Um, you know, smash. Get the feeling of smashing there. A really appealing, interesting, and obviously punchy, as in not throwing a punch, which he does, but just like to the point, like punchy. There's no like fluffing around. Mm -hmm. The uh, next is that the guy probably didn't live long after that. Well, maybe he <laughs> did. Maybe he does this for a living, you know? <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's like the dinosaur puncher that they. <laughs> Heart, they contract <laughs> whoever they are. <laughs> keep, them, keep them at bay. <laughs> Those dinosaurs. 
you know, their uh, infestation a problem. See, that'd be a, that'd be a great movie. Um, <laughs> that, so the hero had to be, you know, quite athletic, some powerful, confident, um, assured, self-assured, determined, you know, warrior type kind of vibe to him. So my thought was when he runs out and executes the, you know, the punch and a roll, it's like he's done it a million times. There's not going to be any, um, you know, hesitation. Or he's not going to come out hiding from under a rock and be like, oh, should I punch that dinosaur? He's just going to go, boom, there's a dinosaur, I'm going to punch it. <laughs> and a dinosaur should be, you know, primal, raw, angry, very creaturey, you know, generic creature. Um, what we think of dinosaurs, like Jurassic World. Um, animalistic, um, heavy, TV, <laughs> and weighty, just like big, like has to feel bigger. And I think that's a good start, um, just to get the thought process before heading into a shot. And again, if anyone has questions, feel free to ask it, or get through Alicia, or jump on webcam. Mm -hmm. So I looked at... Uh, there's, there's one question from Vivek. Um, do you always plan your shots like this, writing down the essence, description, and characters, and so on? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Um, because if you... Like, this is easy. This takes, like, I don't know, 10 minutes. And if you go into... Like, once you start working on a shot, you're going to find that your supervisor or your client... Um, are going to give you words like, oh, we need more power, or we need more weight. Can you make a, your hero more, you know, athletic? So you're going to get words like that thrown at you. Um, obviously, you're going to get specifics like you know, where you place the arm and everything. But, you know, if they like something, they're going to be like, oh, it's, you know, the shot's cool, but can you make it more, um, you know, 10% more powerful or something like that. So you're going to get, you're going to get that to like make it more raw, animalistic. Mm -hmm. So it's good to start with keywords, just like key poses. Mm -hmm. uh, so I looked at my hero, um, you know, he's essentially a human, but he's in a mech suit. So I thought he could be more powerful. So I started looking at, um, I don't know if people follow MMA, like there's a, a power move called the overhand right, which is usually a, a one hit like finisher so you can see like it's gonna go here so I'm going. you can see how everyone just kind of leans into the well, everyone's leaning into the hits so there's a lot of power coming from coming from their hips and the punch is coming from high. So it kind of comes down and that's just something uh, I observed. And I used to do martial arts and boxing as well. So it's on the hips and then the elbow kind of rises up and there's more power when the hip comes down. So I wanted to get that feeling in the shot. And you can see here, Chuck Liddell, anyone knows? Again, from the hips. So essentially, um, I'm looking at like, in reference, I'm looking at lines in the spine and where the, where the flow is coming from. And it's all coming from here. And again. Oh, full in the face. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, where is he going to aim for? <laughs> <laughs> that just yeah. looks too painful. <laughs> Look at the... is it, that's like... Right. It's He's a professional. Like... He gets paid to get Wow. <laughs> so, but you can feel like that's where the, the flow, the energy is coming from. Mm -hmm. His line essentially is like, like that. Mm -hmm. like that. So if you can look at reference, 
just with lines and the flow of everything, then you know which references you'll need and the ones you want to choose. Mm -hmm. And here's a throw punch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so coming from the hips. And in like boxing, all your power actually comes from your toes. So you twist from your toes into your hips and into your shoulder and into your punch, which is all torque and it builds on each other. So that's why there's a lot of twisting and that's why boxers skip a lot. So you can feel that. Again, in terms of lines, if, it's, if you just see it as lines, that's how it's going to look. And you can already sell your poses. Put your poses in there. You can sell the, the hit. So I started looking at heavier punches. And it turns out, like, if you Google image dinosaur punch, people love punching dinosaurs. <laughs> so I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> So you can feel that this feels like a heavier hit now because the other ones are just humans. So now we're like going against bigger foes, punching. You know, even though like this looks like Genghis Khan, to be honest. <laughs> and it's conquering dinosaurs. And you can feel like that's kind of the energy in this shot. And that feels heavier. Just in one pose, one drawing feels much heavier. Mm -hmm. And this is, I think that's Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. So she, you can feel that's uh, the direction of the hit. Just in like, you know, one drawing, again, one pose. And I always, um, when I'm looking for references, I always think of my blocking. I always work with um, key poses before timing or anything. Like a lot of people work with putting the ball on their hips, you know, plotting out their shot. Whereas I love to get the one key pose first, you know, a couple of key poses. But if I can get one pose that sells the shot, essentially it'd be like your movie poster or your thumbnail for your shot. So if you can get the feeling of this dinosaur being smashed in the face and then all the power of Captain Marvel here in this one pose, then I'm feeling pretty good about the shot. Like that to me already sells you know, the, the vibe of the shot. Like it sells power. Mm -hmm. Would it be true to say that um, the fewer, like the more your pose is in a single line, the stronger it feels, like the less it breaks at points? Yeah, like I, I see it as. I actually don't like this, drawing. but anyway, let's look at this one. Oh, again, if um, so, the dinosaur is going to get hit by a strong punch. So I want the dinosaur. Let's see. Yeah, I'll go to the tail. So I want that. This line tells me that the spine and the head are twisting. Mm -hmm. And it flows into the tail, so you can get up a nice pose there. And I think that's Superman throwing a punch. It's kind of an off-balance punch, but anyway, he could be he could be leaning more into it actually. Um, but again, like the strong lines in the spine, which leads into the hips and then flows into the legs, tells me the power, the hit is going this way. So I can rely on that. Mm -hmm. And then the head, the dinosaur is all going this way. So I can rely on that to relay to the audience that flow, power, energy is all going this way. Mm -hmm. 
and that again makes it more interesting but also it registers for audiences that <laughs> energy's going that way like a wave of power is flowing screen left um there shouldn't be any confusion you know when people are watching your shot they shouldn't be like oh was that a hit was that a punch mm -hmm. and that's just another another one see this one's pretty powerful mm, yeah another one so again i'm always collecting looking at references um just to reiterate you can never have enough reference mm -hmm. and i do start with i'll look at videos too which we're going to look at but you can look at single drawings you know comic book artists are paid to do single drawings panels so look at their stuff yeah so if you can feel that power coming from here and then the reaction of the dinosaur and the dinosaur is big but it's still getting thrown in an opposite way it feels like a heavy hit just one more here for you <coughs> So this tells me Superman is powerful without, you know, say we don't know Superman, just through this, this flow of energy here, the, the transference. So he's obviously flying in this way, energy is coming from here, causing a reaction of, the, of, a, of a curve here in his spine. And again, flow of energy. So even in a single drawings, you can, if you can translate that into your animation, then it's gonna look amazing. And if you look at the poses, you know, the nice strong poses and clear. So Superman, yeah, clear poses. So yeah. You know, knee up. Oh. So I started oh. looking at like, um, that looks intense. <laughs> yeah, like I started looking at poses of punches in the air. So, what I'm really like trying to look at is say these poses um, it's almost like the anticipation of a massive hit so does she ever hit him in, in the video at the I end have no idea <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> poor dude you have to stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> too. So, but yeah, I love this pose of, you know, how her legs come up, how her arm is, is winding up. And yeah, so, and her legs came up from the ground. So, you know, she's gonna, gonna go for this massive punch. And that was, you know, one of the, the poses I was going for just before the big hit. It's like, it's actually building up that, that power, that anticipation. So wrestling, this guy does a cool Superman punch. It's actually what it's called. It's um, like, I, again, I was looking at the arm up, how this arm comes out. So it's, you know, it's very uh, dynamic, I think. Like WWE is very um, showy, right? So you're going for that exaggerated pose and then for that, obviously that big hit, which is just a glance, but 
Yeah, he sells it in this, in this pose. There's a perfect example right there. <clears throat> See, look how clear this pose is, for example. Like, he's obviously rehearsed this pose for, you know, the audience. So they can see this pose even from like seats way up the back. They know he's doing a Superman. So he hits this pose and holds it. And even like a few frames in, the knee comes up even more. And you can feel the punch come in. So now imagine if he was holding a rock, then he hits this guy and it explodes. It's pretty dynamic. So you can start to see uh, references like that. I actually ended up using this reference. Um, I liked it because at the time I thought my hero was going to run up a, uh, you know, a couple of steps as well mm -hmm. to, to jump off and punch the dinosaur. Just him leaping up and punching down. Like the poses here are pretty cool to see. He came from here. So as you can see, I'm looking at a whole ton of reference before I even touch my uh, and I'm gonna keep looking at reference. Eddie, uh, can I ask one thing? Sure. Uh, what do you do when you don't get any uh, enough references? Uh, then if I don't get enough references, I will go out and shoot my own. Um, obviously, I'm not going to do this. Because <laughs> <laughs> then I'll never get to use my reference. But I will, let's see, if I say I want to do this. Um, actually, no, let's go back to this for a second. Say I want to have a guy jumping off a ledge. So I would break it up into pieces. So I would shoot myself running. So just get like a run reference. And then maybe for another reference, I would just stand on the edge of my sofa or something. Or like a, you know, a step somewhere. Um, and then I would just feel myself jump off you know, and land on the ground here. And then that's another piece of jumping ref. And then I might even shoot another reference of just myself just landing. Just to get that reference or landing and the physicality and the weight. So I'd break it up into pieces. And then in my Maya scene, or even in After Effects, I would piece it together. So I'd have my three run, jump, and land, put it in After Effects. So now it's one sequence. So now I run, jump, and land, and it's one sequence, even though it's into three. And that way you have stitched together your own, you know, run, jump, and land without, um, if I can't find it. And if, you know, say I wanted to carry two swords, I'll do two swords, and then, because I can't find it, then I'll just stitch it together. Now I have, a source of reference by holding two swords where I can run, jump, and land. Manuel is also asking, um, how much time do you spend looking for references for a shot like this? Or I guess also, like, do you, do you keep looking for references after you start animating, or...? Uh, yes, I do, actually. Um, so I'll look, I might even spend a few hours up to a day looking uh, mm -hmm. for references. Um, and then even once I start on a shot, 
say you know our course is 10 weeks um i would continuously look for references up until i'm right up until the end because maybe i would have finished you know 80 percent of it and there's still one portion where it's not quite working maybe a um you know he's doing a backflip and i just can't like the backflip isn't working with the current reference mm -hmm. so i will keep looking for more backflips and then i would pull sources and put it into my Maya scene mm -hmm. and see if that works in that in there and then I'll keep looking until it works and then I'll, I might block it out. You know, use the same process, draw the, get the keyframes I want. You know, say, oh, I love the way his arm comes up here. I'll try that instead. Mm -hmm. And then I'll try that, put it in my my scene and then it, it'll all connect and be like, oh, that works heaps better. Mm -hmm. Because I was looking, constantly searching for more reference uh, rather than you know, a lot of people might be trying to move this knee up in Maya, trying to repose, and then this arm, you know, comes down here, and this one is like, it's like, ah, oh, he's feeling like a frog. Why? Why is he feeling like a frog? You know, it's because like you're not using any reference, and you're just like moving the foot here, and then you're moving it here, and then the foot comes up here. You're like, what the hell? <laughs> well. That's really funny. Go and spend an hour and look for reference or shoot yourself. Yeah. And then you get Thanos. So, yeah. Like, that's all it requires. Don't spend like, oh, look at that. Don't spend, like, hours <laughs> just like trying to like fudge your way through a pose. Um, yeah, like, just use references. Yeah, and then Francisco, I think like, also tagging onto that question, do you draw over your references if it's not the poses that you want from the references? Um, okay, Francisco. Uh, yes, sometimes I do. Um, but actually, no, no, I don't. If it's not the reference I'm uh, after, and if the person, like Dwayne Johnson here, if his He's naturally putting his arm here because that's what his physiology allows him. His fist is here. So I'm not gonna, maybe I'll try and push the leg up, you know, slightly. Whoa. Alicia, get on it. Okay. <laughs> get him. <laughs> 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 I have power. Um, but yeah, I might like slightly nudge the arm, you know, up, but I wouldn't like, I necessarily wouldn't just draw an arm going up there. Um, I would try and find, say, if you want to use Dwayne Johnson, I would try and find him in a pose where his arm is up because maybe his head might be over here more and his chest might be down a bit more. So there's a reason why his arm isn't up there because it's not natural, right? So if he's not doing it, like if he could do it, he probably would have done it. So, and he's not. So look for another piece of ref where he's doing what you need and then it'll feel more natural. Coolio, all right. So this was a reference I used for part of the jumping, just seeing like, just trying to look at different power hits. This one's kind of on wires, so kind of softens impact. Still good to see there. So yeah, you know, these guys are heavy. Everyone who worked on pack room one did a great job of making everything heavy mm. so this feels nice and heavy obviously our hero is a lot smaller but it's good to feel the difference between a regular hit and a really heavy hit <clears throat> mm. 
Um, did you use a lot of reference for your work in Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse? Uh, yeah, yeah. Marcello. Uh, Marcello. Oh, my students are asking. Good oh, yeah. work, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we actually shot a lot of ourselves. Like, we had a room for shooting reference. So there's a camera set up on a tripod, and then you just close the door because you don't want people to see it jumping around like a madman. <laughs> But they're going to see it in dailies anyway, because you have to upload it. But, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you get to cut and choose what you need. Um, and then you, you bring that in to your shot and just do the same thing. You know, I teach you guys, have your reference always in the corner. You actually have to show and approve your reference as well. So say on... I remember on Aladdin, I shot about 10 references. So my, my scene was made up of, essentially it looked like this Zoom room with all these panels mm. of myself, just doing different things, but saying the same line. So you gotta get that signed off and um, get it approved. And then you can start blocking. And that saves a lot of time. to show you guys reference videos. So just looking at the obvious dinosaur getting hit. Mm -hmm. Looking at the, the footsteps there. That's nice heavy. That's pretty cool. Again, T Rex walking in. Mm -hmm. Just the way, like the the head and the body, like the head. Usually, I think on dinosaurs, they kind of stay still when the body moves. But for cinematic effect, there's going to be like just crisscrossing. Um, Yeah, heavy footsteps. I was looking at these like rolls here, which is pretty neat. Mm -hmm. I love this roll. Yeah, so I was again looking at footsteps, how the animators animated dinosaurs, and just the way the head moves. Mm -hmm. It's nice and heavy. Get that wave big hits <laughs> like they feel so heavy like it's it's kind of satisfying you know <laughs> just this massive so that's also what I was trying to get in the shop just something like satisfying um, so my hero has to land as well so I actually like this reference in our she was my girl. Oh, maybe it's later. Um, I, I just uh, really like the poses from when this guy rolls. I think I have it later. I'll show you. Um, but I sketched out. That's what I'm doing now. So, for example, when, like, it's very dark, obviously, but if you look at. how he's falling, I'll take out poses like that. And then just the way the knee bends here, and the leg. And then obviously on the ground. So you can feel like he's actually rolling. Mm -hmm. And I really love like, rolling. What I really love was this leg that kicks out here. That pose when it rolls over. That's why I use this reference. I just really love that bit for some reason. Like it really just told me that he's rolling and then he lands on his feet. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why. Then he gets up. 
but then he actually kicks the soccer ball into the wall and into his face. Oh, actually? Yeah. <laughs> so, but we didn't need that. But that's what he does afterwards. He's like, yeah, he kicks the ball. <laughs> but I love these poses, like the legs here. So I use that in my shot. Just a question for myself. Do you ever um, change the timing of reference? Like you, you like this reference, but it's, uh, you, you want it to be slower or feel heavier or something. So you change timing here and there, or do you usually keep it at the same? Yeah, time? it's a good question, Alicia. <laughs> um, actually I do, I, if I like find, um, cause a lot of times when we shoot our own reference, were a lot less punchier than our characters. Mm. So in animation is obviously you hit your poses and then you get to another pose. It feels like a lot quicker. Um, Cause that's why the mocap feels floaty. Mm. Uh, you compare it in a sense, cause it's just real life. So a lot of times I would do exactly that and condense down my, my own reference that I shot or find. And I would, then get the key poses out of that. Mm -hmm. So if I shot reference and I love the poses that I did, um, and it has to squeeze in from say, you know, 50 to 25, I'll just condense it down mm -hmm. and you'll get, it'll be a lot quicker in your reference, but you get the key poses and you can fill in the transitions. Mm -hmm. as you go. But yes, I do. So cool. Thanks Thank for asking that. <laughs> so more like um, animal reference for dinosaur I just didn't want to rely on um, looking at other you know movies so I looked at the way like crocodiles behave mm -hmm. just looking at their weight as they twist I think Claude was asking earlier um, or someone was asking earlier what other reference I use mm -hmm. so, like then, lots of real life animals just to make it more believable um, for us to relate to to things that are alive today because you know dinosaurs were kind of guessing right we have no idea um, but to make it relatable we're bringing in all these animals that are alive today because we recognize how they move so if you look at see how the head moves here nice and weighty that pulls the the chest and then you see here on the turn so the head here it's going to go this way and it's going to curl the body mm. and that's how i um just imagine this as a t-rex so you know you get your <laughs> obviously they have long legs but if you get your T-Rex, if the head moves, you know, screen right, it's going to pull the body the same way. Like obviously you have more hips as it steps, um, but the way the body moves and feels heavy and even like getting this nice head leading this chest here. But see how the tail is a nice line. So that the line in the spine that connects to the head. So that feels nice and like, you feel like the, the muscle and bone in the body. It's not just like empty geometry that's just moving and turning. You can feel like muscle and bone and flesh underneath and organs, right? On this turn, it's like squishing together. It's kind of what you want. Mm -hmm. There's two questions. One from Kshiti, <laughs> who's asking, um, uh, how do you make sure that the creature feels uh, heavy and realistic? And by creatures, they mean uh, mythical or dinosaurs? Mm -hmm. um, if you, Thanks for the question. If you, um, again, if you look at, say, the size of it, the scale, um, a lot of weight. Um, let's see, let's look at these old references. Uh, you still treat it like 
any other um, animal or human at any size. So for example, on impact here, it's still gonna, the head is still separated from the body. So it's gonna be overlap. Overlap creates a lot of weight. Um, and obviously um, when things get bigger in scale, the spacing on animation is gonna grow as well. So what I mean is, so the spacing here is, I'm tracking the, the jaw here, I think. <laughs> so that spacing is, as you can see, like that's the eye. Uh, if it was human, a human getting hit, the spacing might look like, you know, getting hit here and it might just like kind of fly up here. So it's a lot quicker or even like less frames it might just end up here at the top already. Mm -hmm. um, whereas something heavier takes more frames and it's going to kind of fly slower. But if it's a human head, just snap up. So you get punch. Mm -hmm. So overlap and spacing and the scale of your, your creature. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one more question from Claude. Um, how in depth do you look at the anatomy of a creature, like bones, muscle, and uh, the mechanics of those? <clears throat> oh, you have to study it um, pretty intensely. Um, and over time, you're going to be able to just look at something and see what's going on. Um, so you don't have to spend like a week just looking at this one footage. Mm -hmm. You can see that, you know, the anatomy of this alligator is kind of a head and then there's a neck and then it might separate into the body here. And then you obviously, just like any uh, animal or human, you get shoulders, bicep, forearm, all that stuff. And then you get hip in there. So really, like, if you break it down, humans and animals, again, have heads, necks, um, chest, hips, shoulders, arms. So we're all going to do the same thing. We're all going to like this alligator has you know a threshold or a, a range of motion that it's gonna pull the shoulder back like obviously we have more because we're standing upright but naturally this alligator is not gonna put his arms up and try to fly that's just not what he does right mm. so so by looking at it or even by studying it you know, you just spend a second going, okay, that shoulder is going to do this and that's it. And when it walks, when it turns, you know, it might go here to here just to put its arm back. But that's it. So you kind of know off the bat that's what it does. Mm -hmm. um, and then you look at the head when it twists. It does that for to grab food, but he's not trying to turn. So the you know, around here, the body's going to stay flat because he wants to stay on the ground. Mm -hmm. And arms are still flat on the ground. So, you know, he's not ready to roll yet. He could be, but he's kind of just pushing himself to the right. And you lead with the head here. So, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> I, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, he says great, or they say great, thanks. <laughs> no worries. And Francesco asks again that um, if you need to combine references, and I'm guessing the answer is yes, from what you said before about Jump the webcam, Francisco. <laughs> I know you have one. I see you every week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, do I combine references? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mentioned earlier, stitching references together uh, to create a sequence. In that sense, I do. I do combine references a lot, actually. Um, 
So to say with this Jaguar, you know, growling, and then I like this bear reference. Oh, so cute. <clears throat> That's cute. Oh, man. <laughs> Terrifying. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, in, in the screen, it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> so I like this. Um, say I like this bear here and that Jaguar. So I'll put them in my Maya scene as two, you know, two references. So I'll time it where they're both growling at the same time. And then I'll use, you know, I might use um, this mouth shape. And I might use, but I might pull, you know, the, the mouth back a bit more like this Jaguar. So in the way it, um, you know, close his eyes by pulling the cheeks up. You know, I'll, I'll add that and combine those two references, and then maybe I'll, yeah, maybe, you know, I like the next stuff. Or maybe if I had a tongue, I like the tongue, and I'll add that in from this reference. Things like that, yeah, I'll definitely combine it. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's a tongue one. So maybe I like this tongue reference. And then I'll put this one in with the other two. I'd be like, oh, that's cool how it falls between. Actually, this tongue comes out. I like the way this tongue comes out of the mouth before the jaw opens. So I'll add that in with the bear and the jaguar. So I'll definitely use as many references as I need. And then say if I like this extra reference, of, I like the way the dog, you know, barks three times. One, two, three. And so I'll add that into my reference. So now I'll have, you know, the bear jaw, the jaguar mouth shape, the tongue of a tiger, and then the timing of the dog bite or barking. So now I have four references in there. And that could be my dragon, for example. And now you have your mythical creature. It's just a combination. There's no real rules to animation. Like, just, if you can make it awesome by the end, it doesn't matter how you got there. If you use one reference, your imagination, or if you use 2,000, like, just, um, get that end result like it's different for everyone but at the same time it's not useless reference <laughs> that's what i say because no one has a perfect memory you can't just remember harry potter episode three dragon and be like i'm going to use that and then just bring it into your forefront of your mind um you need to go and search for it bring it in put it in your mind scene and you can't remember that time you almost stepped on an alligator you know, as reference, like, go it's find it. It's uh, in Australia. Crocodiles <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> That's terrifying. Um, so this is, you know, a nice uh, biting reference. Skin. Yeah, a lot of skin. Um, if you remember my shot, there's a like the dinosaur hits uh, the rocks <laughs> with his neck. So you can see giraffes doing the same move with less intensity, but it's, they kind of, this is how they fight each other actually. Because <laughs> they have horns on their head that are really hard. Right. Oh my gosh. If anyone watches Nat Geo. Oh, I had no idea they, <laughs> they fight. Yeah. So they're fighting over females. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's it gets quite brutal. Yeah. Until one of them collapses, like they put him in a leg and then they collapse. Really? Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's so, so scary. So it's good to see. Um, and I use this reference as well. Because I kind of had that in my shot where 
I like the idea of the dinosaur crashing through and just kind of just kind of coming out of the appearing out of the debris. Mm -hmm. So I had a similar idea. More references because you know it's important. Uh, I looked at physicality of animals, so big, heavy animals. I love um, just the feeling of how they collide. You can feel the, the primal, the rawness in their fighting. It's just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smash you. <laughs> really? <laughs> like there's no like, I feel like there's no reasoning. Um, but yeah, you can feel the weight, the the heaviness. Like this hit here, there's an overhand right there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like you feel like if that hit someone, they're so squishy. <laughs> <laughs> like right there, dude, that's a knockout. Yeah, lots of power there. Mm -hmm. This one's good too. Just like again, physicality and weight, um, opposing forces, you know, and. This one's important, you can see, I'll show you. So, you can feel this guy more stretched out. He's got a better, he's more balanced in his pose, right? Whereas this guy, he's kind of buckling. His, his spine is, his C-shape is a lot more squished. So you can feel that this guy's gonna overpower. So it is actually a good note for you guys to take. Mm -hmm. So his pose is way more off balance. Again, his spine is crumbling, the C shape, whereas this guy is, so you can feel it in his stance, his pose, like mm -hmm. he's gonna he's gonna overpower and dominate. Mm -hmm. and then eventually he does. So you can feel everything moving screen right now and eventually yeah it just all gets overpowered mm -hmm. Wait, so uh i have a question yeah mate oh, okay <laughs> uh so for okay. like so, so uh so you you don't look for like the um, like uh, the poses in the reference. You also look for like the you also look for other references that has the weight distribution. And yeah, exactly. Ah, uh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, I look yeah. for um, I look for flow of energy, and um, I look for also the uh, the vibe of the shot. I guess the essence of this shot is. Um, well, first of all, I, I like the physicality. I love that they were just like smashing into each other. I love the weight. And then when you break it down, that's when I noticed that, you know, this guy is the dominant one. The energy is coming from screen left and break it down again, you know, it's because I'm seeing it because uh spine is changing either the line of action is heading like this this way mm -hmm. so I look for line of action I always look at spines and heads just the way they flow into each other in a shot in camera okay uh, do you always drop over your over like each of your references before you start animating yeah I do like I'll, I'll probably choose um, actually yeah the answer is yes yeah and I'll show you um, in other examples just uh, how i do it as well is that part of your pro uh, planning process too are you drawing yeah. over your references okay yeah 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 i think it's important um it gets me looking at the reference on this level yeah. so on this level rather than looking oh. at it like this it's like oh, okay i'm just watching you know two um bisons kind of smash their heads together but then if i 
with a drawing on it. Now I look at it like this and I'll see it differently. Um, and I'll see it in terms of energy, motion, flow. And I'm going to use those words a lot because that's how I see it. Okay. Um, and that helps me look at balance poses and things like that. Do you also like thumbnail like the poses when you first started out? You know, of, of the timing, or do you just uh, if, or do you just like get the get the reference that you want and just start trying over them? Oh no, I'll collect a whole bunch. Okay. Yeah, so I'll do say I ordered um images and videos I showed you. I'll collect all of that. Uh -huh. And then do the drawings. And if I'm happy with them, I'll begin using them. If I'm not, I'll just continue looking. Okay. But I'll make sure I have a ample amount to mm -hmm. choose from. Uh, it's very important. Uh, yeah, I don't think you can. It's good to, you can't just rely on the first five you find. You might narrow it down to five, um, five key ones that you would put into your scene and use and work around. But you need like, to draw that five from a pool of hundred or something. Yeah, good question, mate. Uh, <laughs> so you don't really like thumbnail, right? You don't like really like draw out from your imagination. It's pretty much from real videos, like from real references. Yeah, from reference. My imagination is pretty uh, mm -hmm. horrible. <laughs> I guess memory memory is horrible more than anything. Uh, imagination is, I don't know, it, it comes from collecting everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I so, have imagination issues. My memory is not. Yeah, not, it's, it's all about, not, you can't rely on your memory. Memory is there to, I think, um, there's a certain amount that you can hold that is going to sit at the, the forefront like if you yeah you can't like it's not an archive or a library that you can just um you know pull out like section c 1042 whatever and you know just grab that that file like you really need to just refresh every time and you know every project is different every creature is different so if you do your collecting of references your brain's gonna, like your brain is malleable, so it's gonna kind of mold around to what you're working on, to what your focus is. And if you make the reference in your shots, the project, your focus, it's gonna kind of mold to that. But yeah, thanks for the question, mate. Thanks for the answer. Anytime. <laughs> uh, so I found reference uh, of lions and tigers running to camera and you can feel the power and the the heaviness especially in their like their paws as they're digging towards you which i really love because i had a dinosaur walking to camera and i love like seeing large cats i think they're beautiful creatures like you know look at the weight and power in these poses You can feel like all the weight in the forearms. And it's beautiful. And like the way, see the way he turns here, he or she. Um, there's like so much weight distribution. Like this pose will come down and hold the heavy body as it's trying to turn. Oh, pussy. Well, is it? <laughs> is it all right? It sounded like it's good. Yeah, um, maybe. yeah I love this pose of him sliding here. It's like, uh, it's great to see, like, you know, all the momentum is going this way, but then he has to stick out his leg here to, like, stop himself. Mm. It's so dynamic. Yeah jumps and runs off again. Agile at the same time, but heavy. A uh, couple more references. It's another one. Look at that. It's beautiful. 
imagine if this tiger had big wings. <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes you can look at it like that, you know. Like just say you you had a griffin that's about to take off. You can just get um, eagle reference. You just have like you know start to starts flapping the wings here, and then you would find a leaping reference of a, a tiger as he flies off. Off screen, mm -hmm. wings, you know. No, no, it's just because <laughs> because uh, Goody is working on the Griffin right now on the other screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he thought you were talking to him. <laughs> yeah, he thought you were like pointing out something. <laughs> Goody is actually um, helping build a uh, Griffin uh, model and. You know, and rig that we want to use for students to animate, which will look like a, a nice. Like that drawing you just had. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, drawings I gave him to work with. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful run. It's um, heavy and powerful, um, but you know the cadence is, yeah, it's the rhythm, oh, perfect. Then you can combine that into a nice like. Dinosaur, dinosaur walk or run. It's a combination of power and agility, which makes your foe more menacing. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys are probably sick of references. <laughs> well, too bad, we got more. <laughs> <laughs> because references are important. And I haven't even touched my yet, as you can see, but just want to show you like a dinosaur getting hit so I wanted to to see how I can break down you know the weight of the dinosaur getting hit in the face what I can do with it see how other people did it as well nice tongue animation there mm -hmm. and plus the reference was a bit blurry so I drew over it but it's good to see my drawings aren't, aren't perfect um, but they give me enough information to say, okay, like the eye here is moving that way, the tongue is overlapping, you know, the head is, the spacing on the head, you can feel. And, you know, Kong smashing a dinosaur. But you can see how the whole dinosaur turns. In the spine and then the tail overlaps so the whole body you can feel that alligator reference in there you know you can feel the weight of this hit um, also I love the you know the rock smashing in the face which is in my shot so you want to get that same vibe. This is what we looked at earlier. Trying to get the, the weight of the hit. Just trying to feel like the heaviness again, which is in my keywords in the beginning. And then here's a breakdown of the poses that I was talking about earlier. And that little celebration but yeah you can see uh, I just love that this pose and then the landing and roll again heavy hits um, quickly and zoom through this. Just one of my instructional videos. I was, it's just a sped up version, but I was just like going through key poses in the running reference. So the, the guy running. Um, not to go through the whole thing, but I was, again, I was finding key poses. I wanted contact points, landing points, poses, and then 
Um, Claude is asking for referencing the sense of weight and power. What specifically are you looking at? Like, how do you translate the movement of a quadruped to a bipedal dino, a dinosaur? Um, from the reference? Yeah, uh, I guess it's two different questions. So one is like, what are you looking for uh, when you are trying to get like weight and power? And the second one is, how would you translate um, quadruped to bipedal or other way around? <clears throat> um, you wouldn't translate quadruped to, well, I guess you, maybe he was talking about um, the alligator reference with the T-Rex. Um, on quadrupeds, um, I'll just let this play. On quadrupeds, I guess um, the hind legs almost work like back legs or two legs on a bipedal character. So the way the hips move, they're going to roll and you know, they're going to push off uh, and step just like a bipedal character. Um, Whereas a quadruped, the hips will be very similar, um, but they just have you know chest and arms they're walking on too. Mm -hmm. But obviously they have the extra joint, the, the three joints, the ankle, which we don't have. Mm -hmm. But the hips essentially move the same in the way they step. Um, and the first question was, how do you sell weight on a step? Yeah, so I think uh, when you're looking at reference, what do you look at to get like to see the weight and power okay good question i'm just going to jump out of this for a sec mm -hmm. um where can i so, so so oh wait no <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> i was going to say um it's all about the hip um so i always get everyone to sell their weight by having say a foot or an elbow if you're if it's bent if it's leaning on something it's bent and then you get to sell the weight you get the full extension mm. like this one for example so here your legs are straight actually let's go to the a good one so right now he's kneeling so it feels like there's weight right being put down in his foot but when he stands up it straightens out and that's when you feel like you know the the resistance coming up from it so anything feels like there's weight on it elbows or knees when there's a bend in your say your knee here there's obviously weight, right? Because you're bending, but there's less weight on it once he stands up. So to sell that, say in, let's go back to that reference quickly of a line running. Let's go to this one. Let's go that side one. So here is a good one. So there's no weight on this leg yet because it's dead straight, right? Because he's the momentum is like coming from there, coming from high. But as soon as you go down, well, he's running full force, but. His chest goes down and then there'd be pressure on the shoulder. Well, as he goes down, the shoulder will come up. Let's look at that back leg. All right, here we go. This one's a better example. Straight, coming down, hips are coming down. And then our next frame, uh, you can see it. It kind of looks like that because the hips came down and when the hips come down it bends the knee whereas the hips are higher but it's still coming down 
and then here it's lower again, so it's bent. Does that help? Um, was it Claude who asked that question? Yeah. Yeah, he says, nice. Gotcha. Thanks. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> and I have another uh, follow-up question. So I'm guessing sure. this, um, this is like when, when a force is being acted on one character. But um, if, for example, there's one character carrying a heavy box, would it be, would it sell more weight if their arms are, or, or everything is stretched out into I guess their arms would be stretched out, but their legs would be bent. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it depends on their spine shape, right? So mm -hmm. this lion, tiger, liger is running and the chest coming up. Mm -hmm. So the hips go down. Whereas if you wanted a character grabbing a box, the spine would be mm -hmm. C-shaped yeah. like that. And the arms would be straight. Mm -hmm. Carrying this giant object and then the knees bent. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, in that sense, yeah, the arms straight, but the the hips would be trying to move this way. The spine is moving up. Mm -hmm. Again, flow of yeah, yeah. energy. Where's it going? It's trying to go this way. Which then to sell the weight, the weight is here, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be the last thing to move. Mm -hmm. the and what's attached to it? The arms. And how do you sell the weight? No bend in the elbow, so it's straight. Mm -hmm. But if it was, if it was leaning forward, obviously, you'd have a bend. And, right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Good questions. Keep them coming. I love All right. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, so I was just, I'll just quickly go through this. So this was, um, okay, finally, we're in Maya, <laughs> and let's just start in the middle. And now I'm posing out using, you know, the reference, the run reference, the jump. <clears throat> And I took away the running and then the jumping. So I didn't really need the landing portion of this. Um, but the way you frames, taking the frames from the reference and using ghosting tool. There's a BH ghosting tool, Brian Hogan. Um, and, or you can clone your mesh and just have it plotted out in your Maya scene. And then that way you can visualize all your movements and flow with all your poses in the scene. Um, so it kind of looks like this. Mm -hmm. And then, so you can have a look at your stride length, the lengthy jumps, things like that to make sure it all connects, you know, from say from this foot, it has to be correct moving into and that foot going over there and then that all has to be correct distance and world space you know this foot has to land here so it has to feel correct um otherwise it's not going to feel like a full run like your character has to cover the correct distance mm -hmm. and another way i i showed that is i'm going to jump to this one quickly <clears throat> so here is just my Maya scene with was it seven poses and dinosaur not even posed and then I just took this screenshot and I just added in my own here's where the camera is going to be moving I did like three key poses for the camera and then I added in like you know the guy pose running here a crouching pose going into the jump punching then I added in pose five here you know arms outstretched as it's falling with the knee up and then a landing pose on the ground here so I filled in my own key poses in drawings 
Um, and that took like, you know, five minutes. And, you know, the drawings aren't beautiful, but they tell the information that I need to go forward. So now I feel more confident in blocking in these couple of poses, like pose two, five, and six. I like the dead look in the eyes of the unanimated uh, T Rex when he was just standing there. <laughs> Which one in there? The one that you showed oh. before. Just oh, one. Right. Yeah. He's like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get a little bit of your T Rex. Yeah. <laughs> You can see here I stitched together the three references. So running, jump, and then picked up the jump from the other shot into a flying punch. Because I love that punching action and I added in action lines. And then I actually time ramped it here to slow it down. So I need to fill that in with reference. But then I stitched in the landing. And then as you can see, my roll is blocked off that landing. <clears throat> and then I filled in the, the time ramp, the slow motion mm. portion with other jumping reference and punches. Nice. And then again, this landing. Gotta have that leg in there, that leg kick out. <laughs> then, you know, just some dinosaur walking. You can see here, I was drawing on my own like poses and blocking. So you can see, okay, fix up the arms, mm -hmm. arm poses, tracking the, the hips, the cog, elbow out. Now you just got to be critical of your own work. You got to just look at it objectively and think, okay, how can I make it better? Um, you know, this head pose wasn't feeling good. Try to get more power into it, more twist. Mm -hmm. Arms up here. <laughs> <laughs> Flapping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I didn't like my how my dinosaur was feeling. I was just blocking anyway. So it's like add more weight in the step. <clears throat> uh, losing my voice. Oh no. <laughs> 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 Going through PBD or something. <clears throat> <laughs> um, so you can see, You're like, so young. Oh <laughs> 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 <we'll> wait! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> um, wait makes me nervous. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, okay, and then you can see. Yeah, just drawings again of tracking the nose, making it more appealing in some of the poses, just the composition of where the dinosaur is. <clears throat> Caesar or Kessar um, is asking how much time it took you to block out the jump and the punching part? Uh, after all the blocking and the, uh, sorry, after all the finding the references, blocking was very quick. Um, yeah, references help a lot. And for me, I'm used to, um, I guess, blocking out human characters because um, I used to draw uh, a lot of like just action poses. So for me, that's um, kind of what I lean towards, I guess. Like I enjoy that. So for me, it's a bit quicker. Um, whereas with creature stuff, I have to find more references. But it didn't take long. 
I could probably block out a shot in a day and then just fix it up for a few days. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Detailed blocking as well. But you mm. want to spend a day of finding, actually you want to spend a few days of finding, say, 10 key poses, five key poses even. Again, the, the poses that sell your shot. Mm -hmm. So my initial, like, um, when I came up with a guy punching a dinosaur, I, came, uh, I visualized this, this shot um, right here. So I worked around this. It's like, how do I get a guy holding a rock in the midair punching a dinosaur? <laughs> so I kind of reverse engineered it. That's so cool. In that sense. Um, but again, here I am, you know, drawing over my own animation. Arms there, foot up there, yeah. foot there. Um, Yeah, like, you know, checking the arcs and arms there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you have to have to look at it that way. You have to give yourself notes, and if you give yourself notes, you actually get better at looking at animation. Mm -hmm. Tracking the nose here. Yeah. Tracking the you know I didn't I thought the fall the gravity of the um, the hero was just it was hanging in the air for too long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 That's hilarious. What? Someone's writing a question onto the screen. What? How do you do that? I don't know. Is this you, Eddie? That's not me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, they erased. Oh. You didn't even ask the question. <laughs> How do you get? That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I was working on the four, the gravity. Is that correct? Yeah, if someone has that question, they can ask it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get? How do you get what? <laughs> Leaving us in suspense. Yeah, oh. so good. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. I'll uh, inquire in the group chat. <laughs> Ghost question. Yeah. Some kind of like AI. <laughs> and what do we? There's just more moderations. Yeah. Here I started to track my arts and my spacing. So you know, the arms and the, the hips. I always track the wrists. The wrists are important and the hips or your center of gravity. Um, and I always make sure arm and leg poses are clear in camera. You know, give myself notes. I track like the, you can see the neck here, the top of the neck, and the wrists, tail notes. Not yeah, like yeah. you get enough of those at work. What's that? <laughs> Not like you get enough of those tail notes at work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's play this quickly. Um, this is a, I think it's an instruction of video made. Um, so one way to track the nose is using, um, again, the BH um, ghosting tool. And you can create this constrained sphere. So I like to track the nose. So you can just chuck it on this, um, it's actually within the ghosting tool. You just pull it out from the head, put it on the nose, and then you can ghost the, the sphere. And you can actually see uh, what your arcs are doing. Let me jump ahead. So here, you can see, uh, it's a bit faster. 
so you can see the arts and the oh wait, yeah. so you're creating you know the ghosting of the sphere and see what your nose is doing just to make sure it's smooth and mm. you know see there you there's some points where it's not smooth so you fix that up mm -hmm. and another way is obviously in sync sketch like i'm doing now just quickly tracking the nostrils that's what i do and then this should show you exporting from um sync sketch as a grease pencil file into your miocene and then you can import it into your miocene like i have here and then once that's in there you just resize it and then now it's in your miocene to fix up from your drawing that's so cool yeah. um caesar is asking um if you don't use the anim bot uh, anim bot arc tool uh, I think it's pretty good but it slows it down as well mm. um, and I find this is a I find like just drawing it in myself I can actually train my eye to track arcs and not relying on a computer and over the years um, when I'm blocking I can roughly visualize the arcs myself um, in Maya before I even actually track it. So when I'm blocking, I can make sure the blocking is, say the tracking the nose, it's going to be in a pretty good arc. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes from also just drawing it in and not relying on the computer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then Seema is wondering, um, how do you decide the choreography of your shot? Uh, based on what I think I want to work on and what I think is cool. So again, I, my initial idea was I want to punch a, dra uh, a dragon, a dinosaur. <laughs> I think that's the sequel, punch a dragon. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's just a guy punching a whole bunch of creatures. How to punch a dragon, DreamWorks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so funny. So, <laughs> I had this idea this image and then I thought how does it get there it needs to build up power so it needs to run um, and how do I make that run and leap more interesting time rapid you know just sell the uh, anticipation and how do I amp that up by adding like initially you know the dinosaur just walks in and it's like oh whatever just going for a stroll but I wanted the dinosaur now to sweep in and smash these rocks. So now this guy is all in. He's got nothing to land on here. So he has to jump and kind of meeting in the middle. Mm -hmm. and I thought, that'd be freaking cool. Do it. So I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And all the smoke and everything. And then you add that in for you know cinematic effects, mm -hmm. uh, camera swooping in, keeping it simple, just staying on the right side of the action, yeah. adding in blood and tongue, and yeah, it took me a while to figure out the fall as well. Mm -hmm. So I made a oh, yeah, I didn't notice here to hit another cliff on the other side. So it's like a double, double hit. Yeah. So just like a, and it just falls down. It's like mm -hmm. a, and I like to think of my shots in beats. So in like the timing of when things happen, that's how I see beats. So, so if you're using sound effects, for example, you want things to kind of like, rather than, which is like mono, which is the same beat. You want to mix up the, the beats, the texture. Mm -hmm. So it's like, boosh, boosh, boosh. and that's one thing, right? Mm -hmm. You have to learn to talk in sound effects. You want to be an anime. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Anim Soup always comes in and goes, <laughs> <laughs> 
when he looks at you guys and stuff. And we just nod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Brenda's asking, I don't quite um, get the question, but I'll uh, read it out. Maybe you'll understand it. Um, is there a method to sell a punch? Animating the contact a few frames hold and then acceleration or moving the punched head before contact? Um, actually, there is a bit of, yeah, combine all of that, actually. <laughs> so, okay, Brenda. Um, yeah, you sell it with anticipation and, and then the spacing of the punch. So you're going to hold for a while and then it's going to be a few frames of extension or one frame pretty much, and then the reaction of the head. Actually, I have a video that it shows you. <laughs> it's one of my instructional videos. It's called Anatomy of a Punch. Um, but, so I go through, this is more like just the force. Um, Uh, let's see, let's look here for example. So that's um, Captain America, Avengers, just tracking a punch that he does. So you see like there is anticipation, the build up, and then there's a twist in the chest and the full extension at the end that's kind of the poses and then you're going to work out your spacing so to get from a to b of a punch it just takes one or two frames mm -hmm. so it's more about the frames leading up to it and the follow through that's so cool are these videos that we can find online or are they um uh they're actually instructional videos for the course oh so, okay okay so you guys are getting take a the course, guys. Free preview <laughs> and take the course <laughs> So here, here are two questions about camera from Manuel and Sergey. Uh, so when there's camera shake, usually the arcs are completely lost or totally lost. Mm -hmm. In these cases, do you still consider cleaning them a bit or just for the sake of clarity or do you not care too much if there's camera shake? Uh, so you would animate um, without camera shake. So you would add that in actually that's usually added in in post in compositing so when we present our work we actually don't use camera shake we can add it in for dailies on a say another layer but when you publish and everything when you actually when you animate it shouldn't be to a camera shake so a punch should just be thrown and a hit made and then it's all smooth camera um, and once that's perfect then you add in your shakes um, as a 2D effect on the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So that shouldn't affect um, the way, like you shouldn't be tracking your arcs to a, a shaky cam. Mm -hmm. It should just be straight across. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the second question is, uh, how do you animate the camera for this kind of shot? Um, also want to hear tips of camera shake, thanks. That was from Sergey or Sergi. Oh yep, yeah. so camera shakes, um, in um in maya you would just use rotation <clears throat> i don't actually use any translation so it's just rotation like you know, up and down whatever um and i would usually do it maybe depending on the camera shake depending on the like if it's an explosion or if it's a punch um you do it either on it or maybe a frame after and you kind of starts off big and then it kind of trails um, squeezes down in your graph editor. Um, what was the first question? Uh, no, you already answered the first question. Oh, what was the second question? Then? <laughs> no, that was the, that was the second question. So it was just how to anim animate. Um, oh, oh, I guess like those two. Here tips on camera shake. Yeah, yeah. So how do you animate cameras for this kind of a shot? So I'm oh, okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. So with Uh, hold on. I'm not playing well here. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't realize there was two questions. 
It's all right. So camera shakes, I would add in, say here, there's a little bit, actually it's, it's always on the impacts, right? So on the, you want to sell hits, you want to make them heavy and it's always on the, the parts where there's impact. So here the dinosaur hits the rocks. So you're going to get heavy rumbling and I think Pranav's asleep. <laughs> um, I can see him in my, <laughs> um, so, you know, there's going to be rock, um, smoke. That's where you have heavy. And then, and plus it's the time slowed down. So it's going to be a slow, heavy rumble. And then when you get a quicker hit, like the punch, that's going to be more jarring and quicker. Like, mm -hmm. and it's going to end quicker. So that's how I saw the two different camera shakes. So slow rumble and then a quick and then obviously at the end the dinosaur lands, hits the, the side cliff and then and then on the ground. So you're gonna add in a couple of um you know rumbles there just to sell the dinosaur's weight. Yeah. So yeah, I hope that helps. And then here's a rendered oh, nice. semi rendered but it's not finished but Ganesh yeah did a great job on that's awesome yeah on lighting and just you know trying to find some cool ambient lighting mm -hmm. mood lighting yeah cool oh, effects there um, I think I think so, uh, someone was uh you hired someone to light it for you right good yeah, yeah 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 oh. yeah so Ganesh cool. is actually doing effects on uh, one of the shots and then he wanted to just do some lighting himself on it. Oh, nice. And in, you know, in our courses you get effects, so you will get the full package. Yeah. You get effects passes, which we can That's yeah, so awesome. show you some effects here. Oh. So it's exciting to see like, um, you know, your, your shot come alive with effects and it, brings your animation into the scene, I think. That's why I think it's important to have effects. Mm -hmm. Just to finish it off. You don't necessarily need lighting, I think, for your mm -hmm. animation reel. Mm -hmm. But this one gets a bit crazy, which I love. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it all helps. Uh, just brings it together. It's that final, final cherry on top. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's beautiful. That's, uh, that's pretty neat. Yeah. That's it is. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in the brief. <laughs> um, I think that's about it for things to show. But yeah, feel free to ask questions. Um, jump on the webcam if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can uh, ask it in the chat box and I can read it out again. Yeah, or even now I can look in the chat box. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to bring it up. Um, how did you do the slow motion time? Uh, uh, slow motion part, was it time warp tool or did you add in more frames? Uh, MWD is asking. Oh uh, yeah, actually that's a good question. I, it's kind of, the first time I really tried it myself, but I essentially took where is it? I essentially took um, so I had animated all in like just real time jumping, punching, and then I took where I wanted to jump from so by the way these rigs are by Carl Figgins the yellow dude which is awesome and Alice Horace rig from CG Trong nice. so visit those guys um, so I took like 
I grabbed all the keys in the animation in the scene, say, and I keyed it from this frame. And then I grabbed all the keys, selected everything, keyed it in this frame. And I just pretty much in my, I just dragged it out the whole everything. So everything in between where I'm getting from that point to that point is now stretched out and it just gets, it takes more time to get there rather than jumping there to there in that amount of time to stretch it out. Mm -hmm. That's it really. And then I had to slow down the effects cards and the camera. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's it. Make it smoother in between. Sometimes you gotta fix up the trajectory instead mm -hmm. of it. The straight line you have to get a nice continuous arc but that's about it really yeah cool. and then how do you how would you go about getting a really f fleshy feel to the character or the creature sorry um that um that is kind of built into your rig controls so if you have let me go so if you have like sub controls, which this guy did on his neck, he had like little controls on his neck and a couple on his belly. So they would rotate. So you can do some sub animation. So when you know when the the neck uh, the head goes up, you can animate these rotating back and forth. Mm. Um, this is without sims. I didn't have any sims. And then you can animate the belly just on each step, just kind of doing this jiggle. Mm -hmm. And that adds to your fleshiness of your, your character. And then there was some like stuff in the face, but it's pretty tight. It's like, you know, scales. So it's not going to do too much. Maybe um, the side here, you can animate it with a, a bit of mm -hmm. wobble. Um, yeah, yeah. Some one or two frames, like like every one or two frames for about 10 frames as a dinosaur's drawing. And you can just kind of do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I might have added something there, but it's pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for your question. <laughs> that was from Claude, by the way. Oh, here's a oh, long yeah. one. Um, is there any tips for realism for keeping things subtle, like the wobble as well as things like overshoot, squash, stretch, and so on? I find that oftentimes it ends up too cartoony. Uh, it depends on, again, your shot. Like, but if you want to keep it, if it's too cartoony, then just pull it back a bit. Um, the key to making it not cartoony is keeping it on model. So if you're if your hero here, um, say I'm not in this pose, your hero is just doing this pose. It feels um, more real than say doing <laughs> That looks real. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> now, as nice as it looks, I mean, you can do a movie like that, but it's because your limbs and your character are not a model. So your stretch mode is getting stretched. So, which um, starts to defy, you know, human like real physics in a way. Um, mm. So keep it on model and it's going to feel a lot more real mm -hmm. uh, and that goes for like if you're doing lip wobble or something you don't want it to if you're doing too much for too long then it's just going to look out of place um, mm -hmm. and again just by looking at it by eye if you're doing a crazy wobble if it looks too much just pull it back if you think if you're thinking to yourself it looks cartoony just pull it back because the thought has already entered your mind. But if you're thinking it looks pretty cool, then that is good. Go with it. And yeah. then I'm guessing also um, for like 
animation timing, I, I'm, I'm guessing a lot here, um, that cartoony is more snappy. So they, they do like bam, snap, bam, right. poke, bam. And then if it's more realistic, maybe it'll be more, a little bit more like the poses flow together. Am I, I might be wrong, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's true. Like um, say getting, so if you're getting from, just a quick example. Uh, let's go back up here. So from jumping up here, like maybe a really cartoony exaggeration is going from crouched. Mm -hmm. And then you would transition like, you know, your arms would kind of flare like that. Yeah, into. Yeah, so it's all about your transitions. So that's more cartoony, obviously. Mm -hmm. Whereas I use a you know reference from real life and just does like a there's a pose for jumping. And there's no like extreme anticipation. It's just like using that momentum and getting into this jumping pose. Mm -hmm. So yes, that will make it less cartoony. Or more. Awesome. Thanks for the uh, answers. No worries. And then um, MWD has another follow-up question for the um, for. The, he's wonder or they're wondering um, if you're stretching out the frames or the spaces between the frames, like you said, will it have any issues? Um, like, will it have any? I suppose like transitioning to slow motion. Does it is it too sudden or are you or do you tweak that as well or do you like it when it's like suddenly becomes slow mo? Um, so in the time ramp section? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or as in like coming out of it? Yeah, I suppose like going in and coming out of the... the yeah, like uh, if you go back into real time, so slow, 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 and then there's a few frames of just going back into real time. Um, yeah, it's okay, but it feels fine with like two or three frames. Um, Again, if your character's on model, and if they f the action, the poses flow into each other, it's just going back, it's gonna feel quick because you are you go from slow to real time. So the time ramp is, you know, obviously gonna tell your brain that there's a speed up. Mm -hmm. Speed up is just to speed up back to real time. It's not speeding up beyond real time. Um, but yeah, it's fine to use a couple of frames. I used about two or three frames. Mm -hmm. And it's it's fine as long as the uh, poses are correct and they flow into each other. Like, you know, get a there's a big jump there, but I'm following this line of action, so the brain registers that the action is a nice curve, and mm -hmm. then that that curve is the uh, flow and energy to push the head and the jaw, you know, the lip overlap of this giant head, screen left. And then there's follow through on the head because that sells the power that's still carrying through, even though this guy's already gone. The energy is carrying through and it's gonna carry through because now the dinosaur is going to fall this way. Mm -hmm. So you can see it tumbling down here. And that all came from up here. Mm -hmm. and that's a, you know, that's an appealing nice. shape yeah. to follow. Yeah, that's yeah, essentially yeah. Fibonacci, isn't it? Which is natural. It's in mm -hmm. our DNA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, does that answer your question? I hope so. I hope I. Um, I asked, think it answers asked, your question. Sorry. <laughs> I said I think it answers your question. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's good enough. <laughs> Anybody want to jump on webcam? I do. <laughs> 
they already uh, there. So, yeah. So I was so so I was just like waiting until you were done answering this question. Oh yeah, no worries. Um, for like little accents in weight and like that fleshiness, mm -hmm. is is that like a mixture of mocap and keyframe, or is it? You mean no. like in? No, you can. Um, yeah, mocap will capture a lot of that. But if you're good yeah. with, uh, if you're good with reference, and if you're good with, yeah collecting uh, using the references in a correct way you're going to find um like mocap animation is is different like it's it's going to be quite real um, yeah frame is different but yeah you can capture nuances um for sure with mocap but in keyframe yeah like um again just pay close attention to your references like for example you know how I was showing you guys that leg kick out from the roll? Um, what was appealing to me was that it was, yeah, it, like it just, um, oddly picked it up from reference, you know, the way that um, leg kicked out from landing and rolling. And it kicks out because, I'm gonna bring it up, kicks out because. kicks out because he's going to stand up on it. Mm -hmm. Like he uses that to naturally prop himself up and stand up. Um, and, you know, I got that from looking at reference, which works really well in my shop. So things like that all apply. But if you're looking for like micro, yeah, yeah, that's what um yeah that's what I was uh trying to go go about because uh you remember that uh Demon Lee Leonardo and and animation piece when he was walking there was like uh there was like um, accents of like flashiness in his walk yeah 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 what was was that uh like mocap and key do you think yeah if you're talking about that yeah Leonardo. You talk no. about that Ninja Turtle? No, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, the Ninja Turtle. Yeah, so there's that would be yeah, like when you capture like the stuff in the hips and yeah. the chest and the shoulders. Yeah, yeah. that stuff is um, all from mocap. Yeah, okay. that'll take. You know, you can animate it. It'll take a long time. Mocap is 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 good. It's quick. It's there. So it has its uh, place. And, and you know they continue to use it a lot in VFX. So yeah. we um, like animation now. Keyframe is a lot of it is digi doubles. Um, you know, like Marvel stuff, superhero stuff, creature stuff is still keyframed. Mm -hmm. um, but you still definitely need you know all the the references for for these jumps and lands. Yeah. Even when you're animating on mocap stuff, you still need animation experience. Yeah, you gotta like do something. Um, the yeah, because a lot of times, like, say so that Leonardo character was walking, but then he does two flips, right? Yeah. So you have to be able to take the keys from when he's gonna jump, delete some of the keys, and then animate the anticipation and then the flips mm -hmm. and then land and make that blend into mocap. Yeah. And if the mocap is super realistic, hyper realistic, you have to be able to animate hyper real. So. And that comes from a lot of reference and yeah, oh, a lot of reference. Yeah. It also was was like uh, jumping from cheap animation to VFX was 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 that like a big learning curve that you have to get over, or from TV to um, film? Yeah. <laughs> what your visitors? <laughs> He's paranoid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, was was uh, that like a? <laughs> well, I'm gonna answer it anyway. But it yeah, was, was yeah. yeah. Was was it um? Shit, like a big shadow. Uh, was it like uh like a big learning curve from going from TV animation? To uh, it it was. 
um, because in film, TV, you pump out animation, right? You do like 30 seconds a week. So there's no time to polish. There's no time to shoot reference, find reference. Yeah. Um, and anything you use is not very polished. So in, in film, you have time to do this whole process that we went through, look for reference, um, think about your shot, and then put together a, a sequence of references and then polish it. Um, you'll find in film, you'll probably spend weeks and weeks in blocking, which is working out the beats of your shot. Yeah. Um, and to an extent, it's pretty clean. It's not super polished, but it's very, very clean. And that can go on for weeks and weeks, and then you might polish for, like once it's approved for blocking, which is essentially client approved, then you might spend five days polishing, three days polishing. But for the longest time, it's considered detailed blocking. Okay. So you would, I would say like, I call it blocking because it could ch they could change the last portion into another beat, add in a beat or take away a beat. So you, the shot could still change. Yeah. Yeah. But it's pretty clean blocking in that sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this this um, is a good time to ask Ankit's question, which is, uh, what websites would you use for um, finding quick references? Because, uh, for example, if you don't have a lot of time in production, for example, I'm yeah. guessing maybe in TV production or um, uh, or TV series and stuff like that. Uh, yep, I use. Um, if you can see here at the bottom here, I'll Google image gifs. So that's a really quick way to grab um, small clips. Um, say if I wanted, you know, guy jumping off rooftop, and then put GIF at the end and see what pops up, and you'll see like a whole bunch of idiots jumping off <laughs> rooftops. Um, <laughs> you can, you know, look on your shutter stock, um, free stock footage there. Um, yeah, just put free stock footage and then, you know, lion roaring or like tiger jump and you'll get a whole bunch as well. And you can save them with watermarks. So it's fine with watermarks because they're free uh, and you only need it for reference anyway. So there's a, yeah, a whole bunch there. Um, Getty videos or getting images is another good one but pretty much yeah those three i use and then sync sketch i'm a fan of so you have access to that you can just upload all your references you know into sync sketch and then you can draw on it like and then you know you can go through the process of what i showed you outputting it if you need to, or even just looking at your reference in sync sketch, tracking arcs. Again, you're training your eye. So that's uh, it's a good process, I think. Thanks for your question. It was, yeah. Good answers. Oh yeah, cheers. <laughs> um, yeah, if uh, does anybody else have questions? Otherwise, I will wrap it up. If anyone has any more questions on the on the chat, we can, can do yeah, we can do like three more and then wrap it up. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I can't even see the question box. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Or you can jump on the webcam. <laughs> no one. All right. Well, in that case. Thanks so much, Eddie. Yeah, this no worries. Thanks for co-hosting, Alicia. Oh, no problem. I didn't do that much. <laughs> yeah, you did. Um, <laughs> reading out the questions for me, I didn't have to go looking for them, which is uh, keeps, uh, keeps the flow going. So, yeah, yeah. I'm glad I could help. Yeah. And thanks, everyone, for rocking up. Hope it was, uh, you know, entertaining and informative. And yeah, super entertaining. Yeah, apologies for the last minute change, um, but yeah, it happens. <laughs> and now you stuck with me, so. <laughs> so oh, well, that's terrible. <laughs> you guys fell for it. <laughs>
Alright. Thank you so All right, guys. much. Have a good one. I'm gonna upload this um yeah onto the website. And if you have any questions about our courses or um yeah, the webinar or if you want to email me anything, just reach out on Greg Griffin369 at gmail.com. Uh go to our website, GriffinAnimationAcademy.com and just find us on Facebook, Instagram, all the good stuff, LinkedIn. But yeah, reach out. We'll do All this right, again thank you. soon. Thanks again, Alicia. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Eddie. This was amazing. Yeah, yeah. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care. Don't vote of us. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. All right. <laughs> we'll all make sure to take, take the. All right. Cheers, guys. Okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>